Hope you guys are having a wonderful blessed day because uh, Grandma's having a wonderful blessed day. Today is a no makeup, messed up hair day with a little teenage uh, uh, accessory going on right there. Grandma got a pimple. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was thinking I might look a little like Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, it'll go away. So all you can do is laugh whenever you're almost 50 years old and you have a, have a breakout. <laughs> Just makes me feel youthful. Today we are going to be in the kitchen. And uh, what I thought I'd show you is uh, Sometimes whenever you want to have biscuits and gravy, you're not always making meat where you'll have a grease or you don't want to use an oil or you don't want to do anything. You use those little packets that you buy at the store, the Pioneer packets for the beautiful, delicious white gravy, white pepper gravy. Well, I'm going to show you how to make your own mix when I come back. See you in the kitchen. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got all the ingredients. We're going to be making a quart jar, putting it in there to keep for whenever I need to make some biscuits and gravy or just some delicious pepper gravy. And so, I've never measured it. I usually just take my pan, get my ingredients out, put it in there. I kind of know what it looks like. And then I put my stuff in there and then I'm ready to go. So, I got one last ingredient to grab, my powdered milk. So, I'm gonna get you guys flipped down where you can see the bowl and see what we're doing. And uh, we're going to have a little talk while we do this. And when we're done, I'm going to make a little bit of white pepper gravy over on the stove. My husband's watching Family Feud. He tried to turn it down as low as he can, but, you know, he can't hardly hear. <laughs> All right. Let me get you changed to a different tripod to get you turned down because I want to try to get you where you're close up and personal where you can see what I'm doing. I'll be right back. Okay, family. I'm going to have to do a voice over here because somebody won on the Family Feud and messed up my taping. <laughs> Grand Grandpa Harold was watching the Family Feud. Anyway, right now I'm adding two cups of self-rising flour. You can use plain flour. But I like self rising flour for this. Okay, I'm adding, let's see, what am I adding? One tablespoon of baking soda. And that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, hey, look at here, I'm adding some uh, baking soda in here. Yeah. <laughs> and this is some powdered milk. I believe I'm going to be adding three tablespoons of some powdered milk. Now, when you make this, it will be able to. Uh, be able to mix just with water but it really does come creamier if you'll add a little milk to it and I'm telling you I don't know what I'm saying right now but I'm using them hands and uh, but uh, this gravy would be wonderful over some country fried steak chicken fried steak um, chicken fried chicken it'd be over some mashed potatoes it would be you could just eat it with a spoon you know what I'm saying <laughs> All right, I'm adding uh, two tablespoons of cornstarch to it. All righty. Now I'm just going to put some heat in there. I believe I'm going to add a tablespoon of pepper to it. I don't know what I'm doing with them hands. I'm telling you. Sometimes whenever I watch these videos back and I'm editing them, boy, I'm taking my finger and sticking it up and shaking it around. I'm like, what are you doing? I think I just added a a teaspoon of salt. I did. Now I'm just going to add a tablespoon of pepper. There we go. There's that black pepper. If you're going to make white pepper gravy, you got to have pepper in it. <laughs> so, let's see. Now we are just going to add the last ingredients, which is one teaspoon of baking powder. You don't need a whole lot in there because you do have a self-rising flour. But I have found here lately, I don't know if anybody else has, but the the flowers have been weak. Like I haven't got a good rise out of them. I even got a, a big, big, ginormous 10-pound bag of flour that I got on sale. And the flour was horrible. The, the biscuits had a weird taste to it. I used it. Because I don't like to waste nothing. But it really did. My grandmother used to always talk about having a bad batch of biscuits. And I tell you, this gravy right here was the gravy that my mama would make 
uh, for my daddy, my little daddy, whenever I was little, whenever he could get a green tomato, he'd like to take white bread, slice some green tomato over it, and pour some gravy over the top of it. It was a treat to him every spring when the tomatoes, when he could find somebody who was growing tomatoes because we never had a garden when I was a kid. My parents had enough of farming when they were kids, and they just didn't want to do that. They didn't want to raise anything or do anything. But I'm telling you, this is a good mix. Uh, if you have one of those uh, canisters where you can uh, vacuum seal, I have the device to do it in the thing, but I haven't been able to get me a, the canister. You can make a lot of this, vacuum seal it, where no bugs or anything like that can get in it. You keep all the little critters out, and it is a good staple to keep in your in your pantry because you may want to have some uh, gravy and you don't have any meat or you don't want to add oil to it. Makes it a little healthier. I'm not going to say it makes it real healthy. And I know somebody's going to say, why don't you use your cannon, your cannon sifter? I couldn't find it. So me, I likes to do things the hard way. Okay, now you see how I'm using this spoon. It's like a perfect technique. <laughs> to get the flour to fall in the jar. Sometimes I have well laid plans, but they do not work out whenever I am in front of the camera with you guys. And I just have to go with it. I just have to go with it and get it done. So like I said, I've never made a jar of this stuff before, but it dawned on me it would be easy to have a jar of this on my cannon shelf so that when I want to make this white gravy, I just go back there and get it. Now, I mean, it's easy to make gravy. You can do it with a tad of butter. You can do it with a little oil. But sometimes, if you you know how it is, you'll buy those white packs and you'll do it and you just get so, so much of a smoother, smoother, creamier texture of gravy. And, you know, not all the time do I get up and fry meat or... Now, I, me, I was always raised on brown gravy, but my husband is the pepper white milk gravy. He just, that's his gravy. We just had water gravy, you know, whenever I was a kid, it was just delicious. The gravy's gravy. I mean, come on. You can drink that stuff in a cup. Who wants a cup of coffee in the morning when you can have a cup of gravy? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I can't remember what all I said here, so I'm just, I'm just showing you what I'm doing. So I'm just filling this up. And it doesn't quite make uh, the whole quart. Um... You could do another cup, add a little bit more of the other stuff if you wanted it full. But it's just me and Grandpa Harold that that make that eat this. But this is some really good stuff. And you see, later on I'll show you how easy it comes together. You just put it in a pan, add some water. But like I said, if you change out that cup of water for a cup of milk, you're going to have some of the best gravy you ever put in your mouth. But uh, I hadn't been to the store at this time, and we had just a little touch of milk in the refrigerator. And I got a 14-year-old that just... Loves milk, so we try to leave it for her. But anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I've really enjoyed making it for you. Had to do a lot of different techniques because of Family Feud. <laughs> somebody was winning. Thank the Lord. Somebody was winning. <laughs> and he turned it down as low as he could, but my microphone still picked it up. And he was very apologetic later. And I said, that's okay. I'll just do a little voiceover with my family. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Hang out. You have room to add maybe another cup in there but i don't want to make a whole lot of it because i don't have the vacuum seal to keep it fresh and so um it's just me and harold that eats uh, pepper gravy so this will be plenty for me to have mixed up for a while i wanted to make more than just a pint but you could put another cup in there and just uh increase your ingredients uh, so well, let's go to the stove and let me show you how delicious this stuff comes out and how good it looks. So I'm going to move you over to Bertha. And uh, we're going to make some gravy. And uh, I'll probably put a piece of toast in the oven and we'll probably pour it over there. And we're going to taste it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make biscuits tonight. Like I said, it's a resting night, a quick night. We had a sandwich for supper. 
And so I'm just gonna bring you over. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna remove it off the heat. Let's turn this heat down just a little bit. And we're gonna measure some of this out. It doesn't take a whole lot. We're gonna make a fourth of a cup. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm going to measure a fourth of a cup in there. And I'm gonna get it everywhere. Cause that's how I like to do on the day that I wanna rest and not do no cleaning. I likes to make a lot of mess. Okay, so let's put this over here. Let's put that fourth of a cup of that mixture that we put in there. We're gonna add some water. Probably about a half a cup in there just to get it mixed. And then you're gonna take your take your stirrer, get it all stirred up, your whisk, your stirrer, you stir down south, your whisk up north, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> We're gonna get it all stirred. We're gonna increase the increase the heat. If you can see that, don't that look like those mixes? So and we're going to start mixing that together. And at the end of it, if you want to add a little more salt and pepper for your liking, you can. The ground pepper would be beautiful in it because it makes bigger flakes. This was a pre-ground pepper that I have. And you have to be careful because it will burn and it will start to stick on you on the sides. So once you start getting warm, you're going to turn it down just a little bit. Like I said, we're going to make just a very little. And you can see it starting to thicken. See that beautiful thickness coming in there? Can you see that? You got to watch the heat because it will, just like the pack mixes, it will burn on you really quickly. Okay, now we're going to add a little more water. Probably another half a cup. So that measurement of one fourth is going to make a cup. So another half a cup of water to it. We don't have to add milk to it because we already put powdered milk in the mix. So it's going to be a water mixture. We're going to put it on that heat. We're going to stir, stir, stir. You can't walk away from this. You will scorch it. You will burn it. And when it thickens, it starts to thicken again, we're going to remove it from the heat. My daddy's favorite thing, my little daddy, whenever I was a little girl, he loved to eat a sliced green tomato on a piece of white bread with white gravy poured over the top of it. He loved it. That was his favorite meal. And uh, when he was a kid, they were very poor. And so when the first tomatoes would come out of the garden, they always loved to eat a green tomato with gravy over the top of it. We're just about there. I like mine a little thicker. If you like yours thinner, you add a little more water. But we like ours a little on the thick side. Okay, I'm gonna cut that off. This gravy right here will be beautiful over country fried steak, over biscuits. Can you see how pretty that is? How good and creamy that looks? And so in a pinch, you don't have to worry about paying 59 cents, $1.50, $2 for a packet of gravy mix when you can make it yourself. And look at that. You just want to make sure that you cook it enough that you cook that flour taste out of it, just like if you were making homemade gravy. You just want to make sure. But let me get some toast and we're going to pour it over it and we're going to taste it. I'll be right back. I have some toasted bread pieces. Down south, we eat everything with gravy. So just a toasted bread sometimes can be a meal. And those are in pieces, which is my favorite. And we're going to pour that over that. We're just going to pour that over the top of it until we've got all that we want. Okay, we got that poured over it. I want y'all to see how good this looks. 
Like I said, you can add more pepper. I want you to see if you can see the pepper that's in there. You can. But all you gotta do is just do a sprinkle. You don't wanna put much, because it's already peppery. So let's get a little bite over here. I can tell you, I just made this gravy for breakfast. That's why we didn't have supper tonight, because I got up and made us a breakfast this morning. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That is a, a gravy that'll be good over anything that you want to serve. Mashed potatoes, country fried steak, biscuits, anything. Now, if you want it to be a little more creamier, don't use water. Use milk, but you already have the powdered milk in there. But if you add just a little bit of milk, But this is the perfect thing to put together. So those days when you run out of gravy, you actually have a little mix in your pantry and you can whip up a gravy. And nobody won't know you didn't stir and stir and make the meat, do all the wonderful things that you got to for pepper gravy. Just simple and quick and you made it yourself. I hope you guys have a wonderful, blessed evening. I love you guys. I will be back on Wednesday for Wednesday Encouragement. I'm trying my very best to put out some videos. And when I was making this this morning, I thought, you know, I haven't shared this technique with them. Now I have. Love you, family. God bless you until next time. See you later. Always good. <laughs>